Okay, hello everyone. We'll be uh, we'll just ready in about 15 seconds. We'll be right with you. Hi everyone, so we're back. Uh, this is Christian Zosser Zosser Foto. This is Rebecca. Hello. We're back to another exciting show. Um, so if, as you know, I've been in Japan. I hope you enjoyed it. In fact, the picture that you see behind me is a picture of a beautiful pair on the ice, in um, on, on pack ice, close to the Russian border. Quite exciting. That's the picture that you can win today. That's the picture you can win. It's a beautiful high resolution picture of a beautiful Valentine's pair. So, um, yeah, see to it. We're going to have three quiz questions for you, and it's going to be exciting. Well, there's been a lot going on in the meantime, uh, thanks to especially Lady Hawk, who's also with us. Now, let me just switch over so I can I can see who's actually with us. So, so first of all, uh, hi to everyone on Facebook, hi to everyone on YouTube, and also hello to everyone on Periscope. So I'm just going to see where the comments is. So I see all, all of you here. So thanks for joining. Also, Hal is there. I can see Stephanie, Kathy, Susan, Osprey Mama, of course, Kim, oh, and so on. And so Pacific North, Kate, you do beautiful videos, by the way, of, uh, of our lovely Vancouver, Jackie, and so on. Lots and lots, uh, Swamp 5050 and so on. Thanks for joining us. And it's really exciting because a lot has been going on with the nest. And thanks to Lady Hawk who saved me last night. I don't know how I would have caught up. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the time where everything happens in, a, in uh, at the nest. She sends me this incredible summary, which uh, I'm grateful. So that's going to be the first 15, 20 minutes just going through the nests. And then Rebecca's got some exciting things here about eagles and drones. Right, yeah. so and some other current events, and, and some other current events with yeah. some brilliant uh, quiz questions because these are not this is not going to be easy for you. These quiz questions, I didn't know any of them. I can tell you straight <laughs> away. So she took me completely off guard there. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so let's start straight away by jumping in into the uh, uh, into the nests. So I'm going to I'm relying completely uh, and uh, again thanks to Lady Hawk on her brilliant information here and the and the background, which is really exciting. I just wanted to tell you though that in White Rock also things have been happening. Yesterday, there was an egg um, that that was laid in one of the White Rock nests, and today the Delta nest. Thanks to Rosemary just uh, sending me a quick email, making me aware of also the Delta nest. So there's a lot happening at the moment. So I just need to switch back one second to the. Um, Let's see, here we go. So I'm going to show you now, I'm going to make us a little bit smaller. And this is from Lady Hawk. So I'm going to tell you what's been going on the last two weeks. There's incredible news here. So we start off in Southwest Florida. And as you know, that's the place I was supposed to go. I was supposed to visit E12 and E13, never did. So in the meantime, on the 21st of February, um, this is amazing what, what Lady Hawk wrote to me. I didn't even know that. The youngest eaglet to ever branch at 59 days. Wow, that is in incredible. So that's the first pic that's the first video we're going to look at here. Uh, so here we go into full screen mode. And so this is E12, um, just the excerpt of E12 branching. So congratulations to Southwest Florida. We know that we, Northeast uh, is usually the first, but Northeast wasn't so lucky last year. But there's the beautiful, um, that's beautiful. Oh, thanks again to, to Dick Pritchard and also thanks to Lady Hawk for allowing me to restream this material. But you can see uh, <clears throat> a beautiful first branching there. And then I'm going to jump out of this into the next one. Um, let me just see if the audio is working. I just have to see if you can all hear me. I hope so. Yeah, I don't see any complaints, so it must be working. <clears throat> okay, 
next video is this one so that is then e13 on the 23rd of february so they at 61 days the second youngest eagle so they are an amazing bunch <laughs> it's the first and second uh most youngest eaglets ever branching so this is the excerpt from the second one that's e13 are they usually when they start branching yeah it's a, it's a lot i thought it was around 70 or so okay. it's a it's a lot it's a lot uh, later rebecca uh, so this is this is really unusual right 59 and and uh, 61 uh but but it's yeah the sound is good that's good to know so there you go that is the second so that is e13 uh let me just make sure i switch the videos off here one second so they don't interfere with each other okay and then now we come to the berry nest again. The berry nest. My goodness, we had such uh, incredible tragedy last year, and um, I heard that um, a lot been going on, but I didn't. I wasn't aware of all the details. Um, so we start off with with um, uh, B12 that hatched on the 19th of February, which you're going to see. Many of you will be very aware of what has been going on at the uh, berry nest. And remember the show I did last year together. Uh, on, on the berry nest. Thank you, Bart Madness. Bart Madness, that's a nice word. <laughs> Great to see your videos. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thanks for the donation. So here you go. This, um, so I'm just going to look quickly at Lady Hawk's wonderful notes here. So that was the hatch on the, um, on the um, 19th. You could briefly see the egg there and the hatch. Uh, beautiful. There you go. There you go. Very nice. And then we're going to jump to B13. I'm just going to switch this off. Here's the next one. Yes, and uh, the notes here is... Let me just make sure I get this right. B13 hatched on the 21st of February and passed away only a day later. So very sad. Very, very sad about B13. Of course, uh, sorry to hear that. And oh, here you can actually see the, here the sound. I'm just going to switch the sound off here, so we don't get any feedback. But um, so that uh, a day later, a la later it passed away. It's a bit um, reminds me a bit of the tragedy that we had. So that's obviously B12 that you're seeing there. B13 not moving anymore. And then let's jump back. But that's not the end of the story at all, because a few days later. B13 passed away. B13 passed away. Um, if I remember, let me just look at Lady Hawk's notes. I think she told me that maybe B12, I hope I get this correct, Lady Hawk. There been so many things, I'm trying to remember all these things. Um, I think B12 may have been stepped on, or was it B13? If I get this wrong, I apologize. But I think the, the, the tragedy about B13 was it took a very long time to hatch and there was rain and bad weather and it was believed to be too weak to survive. So unfortunately, B13 could not make it. The, the, the environmental conditions were simply too tough. Really sorry to hear that. Okay, so if you want to see all these videos in detail, go please to La Lady Hawk's channel and uh, you can see that. And this is, uh, unfortunately, this is a bit of a tragic one. This is where B13, where uh, oh, where the uh, da, where where uh, Ma says goodbye. I think that's that's the yes. I think that is that is the video. Yes. Uh, so this is this is uh, this is uh, rather tragic. And then they consumed it, which is normal by eagles. I know that many of you will think it's most gruesome, uh, but it is. Uh, it's 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 very normal. It is a you know sorry to say but it's a very good way of recycling uh so here they bury it uh, they bury um uh, the, the the little eaglet together so you can see all that it's quite it's quite amazing how these eagles interact here uh, there's a there is a note here from lady hawk that this stream contains images of the deceased eagle b12 so be careful i won't be showing this in detail okay but i'm just making you aware of the tragic situation that has happened um, at the berry nest. Okay, and then we jump over uh, to the next nest. One second, and I just have to look at my quick my notes here. Uh, 
So this is the Earth Conservation Corps. Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, there's been a lot going on. This is justice and peace. Okay, justice is the male. Uh, sorry, no, justice and liberty. I beg your pardon. Justice is the male and liberty is the female. They lay two eggs. And we remember this from last year. There were a lot of intruders. I remember this. And freezing snow. They had difficult environmental conditions once again. One intruder helped and incubated her egg, eggs uh, named M2. Again, this is intriguing. But ultimately, liberty left her eggs and then they froze. A raccoon came later. So we're going to see all this footage here. So initially, uh, <laughs> what a crazy story. What a crazy story. So this is the initial incubation here by, uh, by uh, M2. So that's a guest. Um, uh, that, that's a little bit unsharp. Here we go. The cameras are absolutely outstanding. So that's the initial incubation that I wanted to show you by M2. Then I'm going to jump out of the screen. Um, I think we lost Periscope. Oh, we left Periscope. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry. Did we leave it? Okay, don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, so something must have gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Things, things, things happen. Never mind, Rebecca. This is live. Okay, so uh, here we go to the next story. And let me just put this on. No, I can't get it to... You know what? I have blocked myself. <laughs> okay. I see I've done something stupid here. Because I, can't, I cannot uh, make this larger at the moment for some reason. I don't know why. But this is... Um, Yes, you know what? I tried to block the ads, okay? So I, 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 I um, scored against myself here. So I, uh, the, the ad blocked uh, the possibility to maneuver the page now because I didn't want you to be bothered with all the ads. But I think this, this is not going to work. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is... Um, let me just uh, look at my notes here. So obviously, yeah, this is one intruder tried to help incubate her eggs named M2. And then um, they came back to the nest. And that was actually where Liberty um, chased away, I think, chased away the intruder, if I remember this correctly. And that's what you see here. So lots, lots going on here at the nest. I cannot go into full screen mode here. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Now I have lost it all. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? Mm. Rebecca, this is amazing. <laughs> I beg your pardon. No, that's the next one. Sorry. You know what? Uh, I think, can you try shift tab? Yeah, shift so tab. Let's try. Let's try. Um, yeah, that's right. Oh, it was a control tab. Oh, yeah, you were right. There we go. Very good. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. You're smart. Thank you. That was very good. Okay. Sorry about that. Here we go. Liberty's X froze. No longer viable. That's the one. That is the one. Okay. Uh, that's the one we just had. Thank you. And sorry about that. So let's go to the page. And here, Justice has returned. Okay. So yeah, Justice was on vacation for a week or so. If I remember this correctly. And then returned. So that was on the 27th. That's right. That's on the 27th. So you can see a lot, uh, you know, a lot going on there at the nest. A lot of turbulence. It's funny that the the uh, the more turbulent the weather is, you know, the the more turbulent it is with invaders and everything. So that was that one. Make sure this one was turned off. Yes. Okay, the next one. Yes, this is incredible. I mean, this is in high res. Uh, typically what happens is then the raccoon actually consumes the eggs, which also is good, you know. I mean, these raccoons are actually quite quite incredible. Look at look at this night shot. The, the raccoon uh, seems to sense and understand that the egg is, uh, the, so the, the nest is deserted and makes itself all the way up, up to the <laughs> nest. That's quite incredible. Yes, she is a good mum, isn't she? She's a very good, she's a very good mum. And Justin was, okay, Lady Hawk writes, Justice was missing three weeks. That's a long time. That's a long time. No, no wonder the eggs were not viable anymore. Okay, so that was a really long time. Thank you, Lady Hawk, for that. Okay, so that was a long time. 
and then we go to next now we go to Decora Decora has a fantastic camera absolutely outstanding camera so Decora has also gone through a lot of dramas and what's interesting what Lady Hawk writes here it's about mice visiting the nest so this is absolutely intriguing mm -hmm. so what we're going to look uh, uh, we're going to see some mice here uh, first, no, first she's going to lay the first egg before that. So this is the laying of the first egg. But look at the resolution of this camera. It's outstanding. Absolutely outstanding resolution. So that's the first egg and that's a night shot, right? So that's the proud mama. Okay. So this was on the year. There's the day. Thank you. She, she does it so well. This was on the 22nd of February. So many things happening there at the same time. And then we go to the next one and uh okay and that must have been egg number two being laid and that was a few days later that was a, that was four days later so that's egg number two and look at that tail what do you think that is rebecca what is that i don't know it kind of looks like a cat maybe <laughs> it looks like a cat <laughs> Yeah, does anybody know what that what that tail, that furry tail is there? I mean, this doesn't, doesn't... Maybe it's the raccoon. Maybe <laughs> it's the raccoon from the other <laughs> nest. <laughs> yeah, but really beautiful, uh, really beautiful resolution here. Ab absolutely incredible, incredible shots. It's beautiful. Okay, so that was the second egg four days later. So now we jump to the next one. And then comes the third egg. Oh, yeah, this was a triple one. This was a triple one. This was crazy. So let's just look at the third egg. My goodness, it was a triple egg. And that was on the... Let me just look at the dates. When was this? Uh, at the night. It just night time. Uh, two nights. So, well, okay. I don't know the date for that, but I'm sure some of you know this so well. They can just jump in. Uh, March 2nd. March 2nd. Okay, so that all happened in a very short... Uh, time frame thank you or well, it has to usually the third egg comes much quicker so that they are uh, you, you know that the delay is not too too large and now comes the incredible thing here uh, that was a squirrel really that was a sunny day nature photographer thinks that was a squirrel okay so it was a squirrel look at this again incredible now um um am, 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 am i getting this correct yes i am i am so this here is mama being attacked by an owl that's an incredible uh, footage now you would again ask why on earth would an owl attack an eagle at night it seems so absurd and i believe i still believe that it has to do with the with the fact that the owls can actually see the the night vision camera which we can't see and the eagles can't see but i do think there's a high probability that, that the owls actually see that right and that this is a fully illuminated nest for them so that is quite an attack and then it's also shown in slow motion by the way here you go uh, but a slow motion even is not slow enough to really resolve what happens but it must be quite quite something you're you're, you're sitting there on three eggs and you have these uh oh no sorry that was on the 22nd uh, 27th so that was two eggs at that time i guess slow motion yeah then you can see the whole thing in slow motion too but you can see even the slow motion is obviously not slow enough to really capture the details right because the owl comes in so quick incredible footage incredible and i don't know if you've talked about it mm -hmm. on your other shows but i was asking you earlier about why would an owl be attacking an eagle like yeah. that just doesn't seem smart yeah why know. why would it why would it do that but it does it so quick right well it's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's territorial obviously and i think it also has to do with it's illuminated and um it just seems strange right but that's my own uh, hypothesis I, I i don't know if there's proof for it it's mm -hmm. very interesting and now come three blind mice no they don't listen <laughs> now this is an incredible piece of i've never seen anything like this so what you see here is a little a little mouse and going to quite a high risk here um you know nibbling on some food and um who was that sleeping i think that's mama probably as yes, mom yeah mama decora now this is not going to end very well for these for the mouse because there's only so much that mama can tolerate right so i this is the first part of footage which is quite fascinating i'm just going to spool a little bit forward You're quite naughty they're nibbling along at night time while mama exhaustedly is sleeping and let's go to the next one 
So here comes another one. Uh, two mice under mom's ta ta uh, uh, <laughs> dinner time. This is incredible. Uh, incredible footage. Oh yeah, here it goes. You can see, and now she's looking at it. <laughs> look at this look. Look at this look. That is the ultimate of ultimate of cheekiness. This reminds me really of. Um, uh, come on, what is it, Jerry? Uh, you, you know what's what's the cartoon? Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry thank yeah. you very much. It's Tom. It's like Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> this is really Tom and Jerry. Look at this look. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, this is fabulous. Footage, fabulous footage, fabulous, fabulous service. And it goes on for quite a while, you know. I mean, this is going on for. Mouse just doesn't care. Yeah, look at that. Now you see a close up. <laughs> look at this look here. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> I think it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So do have a look at this footage. And then finally, let me just stop this, make sure that I haven't. Um... And finally, finally, mum's had enough. Mum said enough. Wham. <laughs> so, mum grabs it once. And, I mean, look at this size difference. Look at this. This is really Tom and Jerry, right? And it really, that's in slow motion here. And then the mouse drops. And mum takes a second one at it. Oh, not quite. Not quite, but it's... I, ah, she's got it. Yeah, she, yeah, she's got it. And I don't know what actually happens... But uh, that's it then. I think that was the end of that one, right? Thank you for watching. <laughs> yeah, that's your Tom and Jerry. That's Tom and Jerry for the day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lady Hawk. Brilliant footage here. Now, finally, we go to California again. It's been a crazy, crazy time. Just like, I mean, look at this weather. Look at this weather. It is, I mean, they've got this high-resolution camera. So uh, exciting news at Big Bear. Mama Big Bear laid her first egg on the 6th of March with young Shadow as her new mate. Oh, I see. Shadow appeared last year as a sub-adult, okay, and took the place of her mate, uh, uh, of her mate Mr. Big Bear, right? And he's just turning five years. So that's great. So you have uh, returning back, and they probably know this because, of course, this is... Um, this is a center for, uh, what is it, Center for Wildlife uh, Studies. Uh, or did I get the name wrong? I'm mixing up all the names today. But they, they probably tagged all the birds, right? Because they tagged all of them, they would know that this is a sub-adult sub already. So that's, that's quite incredible footage. So a lot going on there at, um, at Big Bear. And finally, oh, I thought I had one more. No, I don't. No, I don't. Then, then Lady Hawk also writes two harbors and uh, a chase. And how do you pronounce it? Colin or Cholin? I'm not quite sure. Uh, laid also two eggs on the 20, 23rd and 27th of February. So much. West End Cam was down for a week. Um, and um, okay, that's again California. Uh, uh, it went live. We saw Thunder laid a third egg first time for her and superman well that's superman what else do you expect from superman so that's incredible and then as i just mentioned we had uh, also white rock coming in yesterday and today the delta dust again thanks to rosemary for bringing that so that's enough material isn't it Ro uh, thank you so much lady hawk really appreciate this help it's so much you don't know how, how much you're helping me here because it's so much work to put all these shows together so this is absolutely fabulous yes institute for wildlife studies that's it institute for wildlife studies. that's what i was looking for and then i get a quick note also from gretchen i'll just update you quickly what's going on in the northeast florida nest okay so let's just uh let me just go back to our main screen here i'm just going to put uh the big different background again because well we're talking about northeast florida but i'm just giving you a big uh, uh a different background here so what's interesting about the northeast florida nest samson is back again samson you know samson's one of the um i think the five-year-old uh, uh, coming back with his mate A2 has been regular visitors and roost overnight frequently. And then they had, unfortunately, their cameras were down. They had an infestation of ants. Well, that's what you get in Florida when you get these wonderful uh, temperatures. Uh, as you know, biological life goes exponentially with the temperature. And so you had these horrible ants infestating 
um, infiltrating uh, the box, uh, the switch box, and taking the cameras out. But Glenn did some amazing work. Uh, they, they obviously used some ant killers and you had all these ants coming out. They're quite furious. <laughs> Hundreds of angry ant, ants swarming out and exiting. Uh, some with eggs. There you go. All the camps soon back up this morning. So all's back and they were, um, they, 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 Glenn put everything back into place. So it's all fine again. Uh, I visited the nest yesterday and totally last evening to check for eagles and reporting. There's been another beautiful mature eagle at the nest frequently of the past couple of days. So there's a lot going on. These are changes now from the long history that we've had uh, at, at, the, um, uh, you, you know, at the wonderful uh, Northeast Florida nest. So let's see what happens. So big anticipation there. And that's it for the updates. That's it for the updates. So thank you for both uh, Gretchen and, and uh, Lady Hawk for providing these updates and also the Rosemary. And so really thank you so much. I'm just going to see quickly if there are any comments. Is there any comments that you can see? Anything? Just a lot of thanks to Lady Hawk from pretty much everybody for the updates. <laughs> right. I'm just looking on Facebook too. Hello from Ohio, says Sue. Joanne says, Big Bear are tagged. Yes, Joanne. So they are tagged. So that is correct. That is the Institute for Life, uh, Wildlife Studies does that. Kim says, love Lady Hawk videos. Well, we all do, don't we? Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much for providing that information. So where, how are we doing with time? We're quite good. Yeah, that's exactly how it should be. So let me just go back to the main screen here and give you now the next thing um over to rebecca yeah. there you go so kind of some current events um just recently there is a picture shared on facebook or twitter or one of those social media things uh with an eagle catching a drone uh it got shared over half a million times i don't know have, have you ever flown a drone Christian? Have I flown a drone? Are you joking? Of course. Yeah, a lot of photography. <laughs> oh, yes, and uh, I'll tell the story. My uh, drone was actually probably attacked by people in Australia. In Australia. I, did, I never saw it, but I was flying uh, quite close to a cliff, and there was absolutely nothing. I was returning, and it was very calm, and suddenly I saw the whole drone go like this, and I didn't, and I couldn't even see my drone visually anymore. And I thought that's the end. And then it caught itself and came back. And I was so I got a I was like, I'm not going to lose another drone. Anymore. And later on the picture, you can see something got the drone. And I don't know up to date what it was, but it's likely a new book, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah. So, so this picture got shared a whole bunch of times, and a bunch of people were like, "Is this real or is this not real?" Um, and then there's a website called Snopes.com if you've ever heard of it. S N O P E S, and it kind of um, it's like a fact checker for stuff you find online. So if your friend ever shares something on Facebook and you don't think it's true, just look it up on Facebook. So it is a, it is a real got photo. The drone. And I don't know what, what it was, and, but it's... Uh, in the photo, it's catching a drone, and it's actually... Oh, oh yeah, you're in the wrong place. Sorry about that, yeah. That's okay. There we go. So it's actually um, a company called Guard From Above, and they train mm -hmm. eagles to catch illegal drones. So uh, this is their website, and we can... Okay, one second, I uh, Sherry just says, you have a video running in the background. Yeah, um, uh, the, 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 the sound is, uh, just before we go on, I, I see your comments. I know, I just switched it off. I just switched it off. Um, hopefully the sound is off now and you don't get any um, you know you get any feedback uh, let, yeah, sorry just carry on Rebecca yeah. but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a watch here on the uh, on the comments because I just saw that yes okay oh, sorry, yeah, sorry yeah, I need to click on that. oh sorry you <laughs> okay give me one sec give me yeah. one sec I just want to make sure uh, check your sound video running in the background is it on the YouTube oh they can't hear us wait a sec they can't hear us. Wait a second. What? Yeah, the sound is off know. now, and you don't get any. Uh, wait a second. You don't get any feedback. Uh, well, yeah. Sorry. Just carry on, Rebecca. Yeah. But I'm going to. I'm going to hang on. Hang on. on the, uh, on okay. The something's going on. Just give us a second. Just give, give us a second. 
Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Let's just. I just gotta find out what the. That one. Okay. Uh, this one. Okay. Hang on. You know what? I'm gonna close them all. Okay. Them all. Okay, sorry about that, my friends, but uh, th this is so complicated very often. <laughs> so I'm going to. You still hear it? I know you still hear it, but there's a. There, it's louder now. Okay, hang on. Let me. Let me just give me a moment to fix this. Okay. Give me a moment to fix everything here. I'm going to fix this here. So there's no feedback here, and hopefully, okay. Just give me two minutes. If just hang on, Rebecca. I just want to see. We can hear gibber. Screaming. Okay. <laughs> okay, you hear gibber. Okay, um, I just um, I'm just gonna wait a bit for uh, and 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 see if it's stable now, and just tell us quickly, and then we'll carry on. Okay, I'm, I apologize, but sometimes it's so difficult to know uh, what's going on with sound. Can you actually hear us? Um, and is the background noise gone now? I have to wait for your comments. It takes a bit of time. <coughs> I'm just going to wait. All good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank there you. Thank you. Okay. Now you see. Now it takes a long time till we got the no. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Now okay. Rebecca, please go ahead. All okay. right. So I don't know. They might have missed your story about the, the, yeah, the eagle. It but, doesn't. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll yeah. tell it later. Then just go ahead. So, anyways, there was this photo of mm. this eagle catching a drone, and it was a true thing. Um, so it's this company called Guard from Above, and they yeah train eagles to catch illegal drones. And this is their website. You can you can go there? Kind of cool. It has a bunch of videos of their eagles and them training the eagles and just information all about it. Uh, but we don't need to look at that. Isn't that fascinating? Why would a company do that, right? Yeah, well... What, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, why would you train eagles to catch anything? Yes. Well, that's... So. But it's falconer, right? I mean, that... Yeah. But that had... Well, that had a reason, right? That's why they did it, because that was food, right? That's, yeah, that's. <laughs> so they're kind of like falconers, but for catching um, illegal drones. And there's multiple reasons why drones are a problem today. Right. So... Uh, quickly, I'll just show them the video. Oh yeah, my goodness. So this is a crazy video. Oh, yeah, that's it, that's it, good. Yeah, so this is them uh, in one of their training facilities with the eagle. And you can see it catches the drone. Wow. I wonder if they resell the drones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Train the eagle to, um, well, I mean, the first thing I would thought, wow, how does it not get injured, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Alright. Exit that one. And then... Yeah, so this was... Uh, there, this company is still around. And back in 2015, that photo that was shared on Facebook is actually from a few years ago. But for some reason, it just popped up recently, oh, which really? is why people have been talking about it. Um, but the reason that they've been training eagles to catch these drones is because there's been a lot of problems with uh -huh. people using drones to fly contraband into prisons um wow yeah that's getting big isn't it yeah also problems at airports now look at this where does this crazy picture come from i mean <laughs> I who like in their right mind who, who in their right mind would do something like that i mean this is just insane yeah so uh, Christian had heard of this airport, Gatwick. Gatwick, that's right. I don't know if you guys heard about this at the end of last year. Uh, somebody was flying a drone around Gatwick Airport in London. Yeah, that's London. That's yeah. one of the three airports in London. That's correct, yes. And so it ended <clears throat> up like canceling a whole bunch of flights for 18 hours. They couldn't land any planes because they were worried about this drone getting sucked into one of the turbines. Um, so people doing that. And then... Oh, by the way, Rise Raptor. Hi, Kurt. Says here, toes can be uh, dislocated, feet cut, you see? Yeah. That's what, I, that's what I thought, right, Kurt? Hi, nice to see you, by the way. And Hal says, the Netherlands was training eagles to catch drones several years ago. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the exactly other one. this one, the Dutch, it, the Dutch police in the Netherlands. Right. Oh, okay. So, so that was... They hired mm -hmm. that uh, guard from above company. But then, yeah, soon after they started that, they decided to cancel the program because 
of course, they were worried about Eagles getting injured, like injuring their talons. Um, and also they were finding it just wasn't that reliable, I guess. Mm-hmm. The Eagles just don't have that instinct to go after a drone because it's not food. You, it takes a lot of training for them to do it. So they decided it wasn't worth it. Um, and yeah, if you look at the size of like this drone. That's a monster. If you set an eagle after that, it's just probably not going to work out very well. So they've actually come up with a bunch of other um, trials and things that might work against drones, but there is a lot of things they need to And do. Danny, by the way, hi Danny on Facebook is saying, how do the eagles not get injured by the propellers? Mm-hmm. That's exactly what Kurt just answered uh, uh, on uh, on YouTube. So I think that's the answer. They, they can get injured. Yeah. I mean, I put my finger in there once, you know, I had to, I'm stupid, okay? <laughs> But you know how I am. I'm uh, this little boy thing never goes. Yeah. So I had this drone. Ah, let's see what happens, right? Yeah. Well, it wasn't quite like that. I was flying the drone inside, and it came out of control. I have to be honest, okay? I was flying inside. <laughs> I thought if my wife comes home and and I bash things, so I better get my finger cut. So <laughs> I took the drone down with my hand, okay? Yeah. Uh, that was my first experience with the drone inside. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so. I mean, they didn't really necessarily get hurt with some of the smaller drones because they do have pretty protected talons with scales and eagles are naturally protected against their prey. So right. like they, they attack something and the prey attacks back. Their their talons are pretty well defended. But yeah, just not the greatest idea to use an eagle, I guess. Um, but they have come up with some other solutions. So this is one. Oh, this looks like <laughs> this looks, looks like a bazooka. This is crazy. Yeah, this is like a bazooka that shoots a, a net out to capture drones, but it doesn't really work that well for in an airport because your drone might be. Oh, uh, thanks to Duran and Duranana's king. Yeah, Ananas king. That's a German Ananas. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. That's a the, thank you very much for for the donations and also I think it was someone else also, right? It reminds me of the French word for pineapple. Pineapple. That's a well. That's a German <laughs> word for pineapple. Oh, okay. It may. It may be. Yeah, and the same too. Yeah, ananas king is. Oh my goodness. Very, thank you very much, ananas king. Very kind of you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. yeah so, so it doesn't work as well in airports, but then they came up with. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, go on. Sorry. Go. I keep getting. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Mixed up. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so here's another crazy looking contraption. Um, so this one's called Drone <laughs> Shield, and this one basically, if you go to their website, you can see a video, and he aims it at the drone, and then when he gets it locked in, he can jam the signal of the drone and either cause it to land on the ground, or they can activate the return to home feature, and then they can track it as it returns back to whoever's causing the problems. Um, so those are some of the solutions they came up with other than using eagles, but... I don't know. Kind of interesting that they tried to use eagles, but yeah, it didn't work out the best for them. Okay. Yeah, so that was our one story about eagles. I don't know. Do you guys have any stories any... about driving drones or anything crazy like that? I just want to make sure everything's turned up because I see Susan North said something. She is screeching, but I'm not quite sure where that would come from. Um, anyway, go go on. Sorry. Yeah, uh, interesting stories about drones. So those of you who haven't heard it, uh, I was flying my drone happily in Australia along a cliff, uh, and um, it was because there was some interference before. But um, my drone lost, uh, you know, co- quite some height suddenly. I saw it on the video. I thought that's it. I thought I hit something, but I knew I didn't actually because I was flying incredibly careful, you know, not to come close to anything. And that I have no other explanation. That must have been a wedgetail eagle, uh, because they are known to be quite aggressive there. And uh, I was lucky the whole drone didn't disappear. So yeah. anyway, go on. Yeah, and you're lucky that it didn't crash. Yeah, it didn't crash. Yeah. Well, it. I, I. But I got rid of the one drone anyway. So. <laughs> oh, now comes an interesting story. That's incredible. So go on. Uh, yeah. Rebecca. So our next kind of current event, uh, applicable more to the coast of BC here. So over the next month or so, it's. Uh, Pacific herring spawning time Mm -hmm. and if you haven't heard about Pacific herring um, they're a really important species here on the coast so in the fall we get salmon that come and and breed here and provide food for a lot of animals like the eagles but then in the springtime we have these Pacific herring that come from out deep in the ocean eating plankton and stuff and then they come into shore and like thousands of them just these tiny little silver fish and they, you can kind of see them swimming around in the reeds here. 
They come to the coast to spawn and lay their eggs. It's an incredible event, isn't it? Yeah. Have you seen it? I've seen it uh-huh. once, just like from uh-huh. very far uh-huh. away, though, like on shore, and you could see it just all yeah, the birds I've, I've out seen there. It's, 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 it's absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. So when is exactly the time? Do you know? Uh, well, there's a wildlife festival from March 20th to April 29th, oh, okay. I think, okay. out on Vancouver Island. Wow. So kind of in between mm-hmm. there. So yeah, they swim through the reeds and then they deposit their eggs on the plants, and you can they. Uh, the females lay, each female can lay up to 20,000 eggs each. So you can actually see like from a plane, all of the milt and the eggs in the ocean. So it's like a huge visible event. And obviously this attracts a lot of wild animals and birds. Um, so, and it also happens exactly within the Pacific right. Flyway. So this is kind of the migration route that birds follow. Um, when they're going up north to their breeding territory and they stop here along the way to eat the fish and the eggs. So what about orcas? Do they also follow that? Uh, the orcas Orcas eat more, uh, salmon. There's right. Of course. Yeah, sure, (laughs) sure. But, but I'm uh sure if they, if they found some, they might eat it, but they're probably too small, right? Yeah. They're a little small. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, so some of the birds that might eat them are cormorants. Oh, beautiful. And gulls and brants. This, this is the wildlife festival. Like thousands of these birds will come along and eat them. Nice. Uh, and also gray oh. whales, uh, their migration time oh, they do. lines up too. Wow. So it's a big whale watching time for people. Oh, that's incredible. Uh, and also well, sea lions. Of course, of course. <laughs> and course. seals and just all kinds of stuff. So it's also a really important food fishery though. So there's a commercial fishery and a traditional fishery. And this is a really cool practice that the First Nations do. So what happens is they go to areas where they know the herring are spawning Mm -hmm. and they plant in big boughs off of hemlock trees, like a conifer. And the herring will come and they'll lay their eggs all over the plant. So you can kind of see it. I don't know where it is, but somewhere along here, you can see all that yellowy stuff. Oh, right, eggs. right, right. Yeah, you can. There's it. Yeah, so here's a close picture. My goodness. Picture. And they use that for food, <laughs> and they also sell it to Japanese markets. So I don't know if you saw any of it there. It's not really uh, the right season. I'm, but, I'm not sure. I saw yeah. so many different things that I've never <laughs> so seen before. So many weird foods so, over there. Yes, Some mushy, weird yes, yellow stuff. Yeah, something like that. Uh, very possible, okay? <laughs> yeah, so a uh, really cool event, really like wildlife hotspot at that time of year ah. and this brings us to our first quiz quiz question. question quiz question quiz question let me just okay one second rebecca i am going to put in a phone number there we go so it's quiz question time um and let me just put us back oh i see um okay uh let me see if i can put us here wait a second uh so we're live back on the screen i'm just going to move us onto the screen there we go yeah now we're back on the screen All right, okay phone number. so now i forgot the phone number <laughs> what happened to the phone number what happened to... you just gotta click on there there we are there we go oh, oh now we're gone again <laughs> oh that's so funny okay well anyway it's either the phone number or the quiz question or us <laughs> so you're going to see at the moment you're going to first see the quiz question okay yeah, so I, well, I won't show the picture of the answer, but the quiz question is, uh, so herring, they can live up to 16 years mm-hmm. and they can spawn multiple times. So the question is, what is the name of the life history trait that describes an animal that can breed more than once? So there's a sp- certain word that means breeds more than once. A certain word that breeds more than, means breeds more what than once. What is one. the name of... Oh, sorry. Oh gosh! Yeah, let me just sorry. Let me just switch this off one second, uh, Rebecca, because so we don't get back feed. Because I have to put this on here. Okay. Yeah. So. So the photo, um, the photo of the pair of Stellar's Eagles is the prize, but you have to call in today. So we're only going to award the prize if you phone in. Yeah, it's only if you phone in. Uh, that's that's exactly it. So there's the number four two five two two three four nine six zero four two five two two three four nine six zero. Just. Say the question again. I'm just going to put you on the, um, see if I can, yeah, get you back in here. Okay, so, yeah. So, what is the term that describes an animal that can breed more than once? Right, right. 
So I have not until now managed to get us all in. Oh, there's the phone number on top. Yeah, I actually managed it. Okay, there we good. Go. Yeah. Here we go. go. Okay, so we got, we got it all. Okay, so you can see us too. So that's a quiz question for you. Yeah, so um, the term for an animal that can breed more than once. And here I'm going to give you a big hint. I didn't know the answer. <laughs> so that's a big hint. That's very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got, the, we got the number there. So please, you know, call in. You can use Google or whatever. Um, yeah, and it doesn't matter if you didn't know it and you know it now because then you learned something and then you deserve the picture, okay? We've got this beautiful, oops, let me just put the beautiful picture here in the background. So that's the picture you can win. It's a beautiful pair. Took it, to one of my best pictures from, from Hokkaido, from Japan, of a beautiful stellar, uh, a, a pair of stellars on the ice, okay? So that's what you'll be able to win. Uh, really marvelous and unique picture. I can tell you there are not many like that. So uh, it's worth looking for this, okay? So mm -hmm. this this is your big chance. Okay, so I'm going to put in the qu quiz background again. Where was it? Yeah, so I'll just clarify a little because there's a few questions mm -hmm. on here. Um, so Nature Scoper asked in the same year. And no, uh, I mean, like okay. the difference between either dying after you spawn mm -hmm. or being able to live on and return again to spawn again the next year so kind of the difference between salmon and herring like salmon die every time they spawn uh well there you go That's yeah the, so there is a so there's, there's a, a term, term for if you die right after you spawn and there's also a term for if you can continue to reproduce but it's specifically for spawning right specifically or, uh, or, or no it's it's it could, also applies to like bears oh, bear, yeah. what about eagles eagles too oh yeah. okay so there we go okay so now can we get to, we get a phone call this is wonderful okay let's see if we can hello oh, hi. hi who's this please Ah, you have been very loyal, fantastic, Lion, Lionheart. I love your shows. I love your shows so much, and I learn so much. Thank you. Thank you. So do I. You know, Rebecca's educating me. <laughs> so, you're the only one who learns. That's great. That's great. So, where where are you located? I am in the Western North Carolina mountains. Wow, isn't it cold there? Well, we have, yeah. well, we have snow in Vancouver. Yeah, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Oh, wow. 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 Really? Okay. Well, yeah. Go on. Okay. I have your answer for you. Go on. Let's hear it. Okay. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this properly. It's Idaho or Idaho parody or Idaho Paris. Reproduction is that right? You got it. It's Itero Paris or Itero Parody. Hey. Very awesome. good. Well, congratulations. Yeah, and 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 please send uh, um, so that um, Alina, please send uh, me an email, just a uh, zasafoto at gmail dot com with your email details. Okay, please do that. Okay. I will, and thank you very much, both of you. <laughs> okay, thank thank you so much for calling, and that was great. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Take bye. care. Thanks. Bye. Wow, so yeah, that's how so you good. spell it. Yeah, it's so real. this is how you spell it. Maybe we can get rid of the uh, Oh, yeah, phone yeah, number. yeah, we can. And Okay, well, we can't at the moment. Uh, we can't take uh, um, anything at the moment. So I'm just going to let it ring for now because, hang on. Simply, I'm just going to put it on silent because we, we first have to give the second question, okay? <laughs> uh, or do you, are you probably going to go continue and then we'll come with the second question? Yeah, right? uh, the second okay. question comes a little bit later. Okay, comes a bit later, so yeah. you've got to be patient. So, what, uh, hang on, you want me to bring the telephone number yeah, away? Phone yes, number where was the phone number and all these things? It's highlighted there at the top. Yes, yes, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to bring it, this back. Okay, there, there we, we go. go. Okay, yeah, so, so there's you got that. two yeah. different types here. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, it applies to all animals, not just fish. But I don't know. When I did my biology degree, we learned about it when we talked about right. fish. So that's how it's in my head. But um, yeah, so for things that can mate more than once, like herring or bears or eagles, mm -hmm. the term is iteroparis. So from the Latin root word, like iteration or iter itera, yeah, right. That means like repetitive. Repetitive, oh, very good. So more, so mating mm -hmm. more than once. Um, but then if you compare that to something like salmon that die after mm -hmm. they reproduce, or something like a butterfly or something like that, 
Then it's semel Paris, and semel means uh, once. Now, if you look at the picture, you would think that putting putting um, you, you put, putting a rod like this in your mouth is into a Paris. That's what how I would <laughs> interpret the picture, right? Yeah. I think what what is it? <laughs> I wouldn't know that that is actually what it is. Yeah. that's a funny picture. Yeah, this is a picture of. Uh, my partner Reese. So ah, here we go. Yeah, so that's where go. the context comes from. <laughs> so the one, the semel Paris here, that's sockeye salmon, <laughs> and not a lot of people know the other fish that Reese is holding there. That's uh, steelhead, which is like a trout, but it goes out to the ocean like a salmon and then comes back and reproduces. But it can go back and forth multiple times, which is a pretty wow. crazy life adaptation right oh he looks very happy there yeah i think that's his first steelhead i think so <laughs> wonderful <laughs> rebecca excited. good okay go on yeah Sorry. so that was our first quiz question and our second topic uh was the herring spawning and on to our third topic is all about northern flying squirrels flying squirrels have you ever seen one I, I thought I found one one time, but it was not a flying squirrel. It was a different type of animal. I mean, I see flying <laughs> squirrels, but not like that, right? I mean, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so they can't actually fly. They're, they're technically gliding squirrels. But they glide crazy well, yeah. right? I mean, it's an insane. Look at that. Yeah, and if you look at the eyeballs, you can tell it's a nocturnal animal. It's got big whiskers and big eyeballs. But it looks almost like a bat, doesn't it? But, uh, you yeah. know, it's... Uh, a little it's cuter. crazy. Yeah, a little cuter. <laughs> I love squirrels. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this topic was um, flying squirrels are a really important keystone species for mm -hmm. forests. Um, and one of their favorite foods are this thing right here. Maybe really quickly we can see if anybody knows what this is or what flying squirrels like to eat. We'll just watch the comments for a second here. Okay, uh, I have no idea, Rebecca. <laughs> I just want to see if anybody knows what it is. That's another hint here, by the way. <laughs> this isn't the quiz question, but this is just this is what it is. interesting to see if anybody knows what it is. Let's just see what's going on on Facebook quickly. What are they saying? Yes, uh, by the way, this is a Seattle area code. It is. I, you, I purposely, uh, Danny, I, I purposely used a... Um, a U.S. Uh, a number, although I live in B.C., because I know that most of the the, the people dial in from the U.S. That was the that was, that was the oh, reason. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, mm. uh, Nature Scoper says that they've seen the flying squirrels in Western Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yeah, they're all over uh, this area here. Mm -hmm. And Lady Hawk says mushrooms. Sherry M says mushrooms. Mushrooms. That's right. Yeah. So these are a type of truffle. And truffles, um, they can't spread their spores unless they're dug up because they're buried under the ground. So the flying squirrels do a special service of digging up the mushrooms and spreading oh, the spores throughout the forest. Which is, which is so important, right? Yeah, it's really oh. important because wow. um, if you guys didn't know, a lot of different types of mushrooms, and I also really love mushrooms. Uh, I, I forage for wild mushrooms yeah, in the you, fall. Yeah. I wouldn't dare pick mushrooms because I pick all the poison. <laughs> yeah. I heard recently the most poisonous ones are in BC. Yeah, they are. Huh? And yeah, people get sick from them every year because they just... But they don't die? They, yeah, they can die. Wow. There's been a few deaths wow. of the death cap mushroom. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're not, they're not originally from oh. here. Oh, they wow. So in, invasive species. Other, wow. Yeah. But okay. uh, yeah, so I, I teach some mushroom courses and stuff. So... What happens is that certain types of mushrooms will make a connection with the trees of the forest and they will, in exchange for sugars from the plants, will help the trees get water and nutrients out of the soil. So they have a symbiotic relationship with each other uh, and uh, it benefits both the mushroom and the trees. And I think this is where our next quiz question comes up. But I just oh, here we sure go. I find I this fascinating. So, are you are you actually inferring oh, yeah. that they're communicating with each other, with each other? Yeah. So really. Yeah. So back to the squirrels. They spread the spores. They help um, help move the spores around so that these truffles can continue to connect the trees together. And then the trees can actually communicate with each other through the fungus roots. Goodness me, the, the it, phone, phone wire here. Yeah, it's like uh, the biologist that discovered this or helped kind of narrow down the mechanism of this calls it the world wood web. 
Wow, and this like is not fiction, right? This is real. Yeah, this and is how real. do they communicate? What are they doing actually? So they can actually send uh, water through the roots of the mushroom and to other trees what? or other nutrients, and they can also send signals. So if one tree gets attacked by bugs, it can send a signal through the fungus to another tree to make sure that they bring up their defenses against the insects. You've got to be joking, really. So it, Oh, this super complicated thing that's happening wow. underneath your feet in the forest it's that insane. you wouldn't even see. Well, this is interesting, Rebecca. Yeah. So the quiz question uh, okay, has here to we go do again. with these the fungi and these plants together. So the question is, what's the name of the symbiotic relationship between the fungus and the trees? There's a special term for oh, this type of relationship. Oh, my goodness. Okay, okay. Here we go again. Okay. Yeah, feel so, free to Google, but you gotta yeah, call you gotta in Google. to win. You gotta call in to win. So let me just see if anyone's calling. I don't see anyone at the moment calling in. Wait a second. So yeah, do please. Uh, so the phone lines are open again. They're, they're open again. Um, Google this one. Nature Scoper, do you know the answer to this? I certainly don't, okay? <laughs> No, I'm very honest. I tell you what I don't know. I, I definitely don't know this. So I'm, I, you know, this is wonderful. Um, so, yeah, and if you want to learn more about this too, um, if you mm -hmm. YouTube Smarty Plants, it's a David mm -hmm. Suzuki special, and it talks oh, really? all about how these okay. plants communicate with each other. Um, and the scientist's name, her name is Suzanne Simard, and she's from the University of British Columbia. Oh, wow. So there's all a whole bunch of cool information out there about, about these things, and when you're picking wild mushrooms, you actually look for certain types of trees because mm -hmm. some edible mushrooms will only grow when certain trees are around because they use that that relationship. Okay, so here's your big chance to win this beautiful picture again, okay? So uh, really, um, let me just go and put it back in the background. So that's the beautiful picture that you can win taken by myself in Hokkaido just recently, about two weeks ago. Um, absolutely exquisite experience by the way so it means a lot to me and i hope it means a lot to you because there are very few pictures like that where you get two eagles right next to each other on the ice block okay so try and win it try and win it and it's a difficult question that's why we did it once more the question okay yeah, so the question is what is the name of the symbiotic relationship where a fungus connects with a plant root uh to benefit oh, each other here we go here we go Okay, we have a, a caller here, so let's just see. Hello? Hello? Hi, who's that, please? It's Lori. I don't know why I have the right answer. I'm going to be so embarrassed. Lori, is that right? Yes. Hi, where are you calling from? Iowa. Iowa, okay, very good. Oh, excellent. So how is the weather there? It must be cold, huh? <laughs> it's... Um, it's actually starting to warm up, and our snow is melting, so I'm a little bummed about it, because <laughs> I love the snow. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, but you get spring, and then it's the best time, isn't it? You, the days get longer. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yes, so. it is, actually. <laughs> so, the question, do, do, do you need us to ask the question again, or do you know the answer to it already? I think I know the answer, but if not, I'll be so embarrassed. Oh, there's nothing be you, no, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Please, it's a difficult one. Is it my core? My core is this? Yeah, I, you're not saying it right, but that is the right answer. So it's mycorrhizal. Yay. Wow. Awesome. But I could tell you were trying to say the right word. Can you put it on the screen? <laughs> yeah, which, I'll put it on uh, the screen. Okay, one sec, one sec, uh, Rebecca. Let me just switch it back to here. And then, okay, so they can see that. And yeah, and, yeah, so and blend out the phone number, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's no, okay. That's okay. Uh, so we don't. We got too many screens here. Often, there we go. Okay. So that's it. So how do you pronounce it? Yeah. So Lori got it right. It's mycorrhizal, and so it's myco for fungus and rhizal for root. Wow. So mycorrhizal. What? It's a. It's a. That's your new password, right? Because <laughs> nobody will know how to spell it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's a that's incredible. Well well done, excellent. So so do, you. do send us an email zasafoto at gmail dot com just with your uh, uh, with your details so we can send you that picture. Congratulations. Okay. I will. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for calling. Bye bye. Uh, bye.
Wow, that was a difficult one. You, you, that was a difficult one. That was a great question. So yeah, it's very difficult to try to describe in a short amount of time. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It is. I'm just curious that anybody without looking it up, just put your put your. I'm just really curious. Anybody without looking uh, looking this up, uh, did anybody actually know the answer? You know, without googling, I'm just say yes, I did. You know, that's fantastic if you did. Uh, so I'm just curious. Yeah. I'm just curious who actually uh, knew the answer. I think okay. tree climbing might have known because they uh, ah. know about the study going on in British Columbia. Okay. So maybe maybe tree climbing. Tree climbing might have known, right? Or nature scoper is it? And uh, maybe Osprey Mama knew Lady Hawk and a few others here that we have who are very knowledgeable uh, would know Jack D maybe and so on and so on. Let me just see who's on Facebook. Um, Let's see on Facebook. Surely would you have known Cadence, uh, Danny and so on. Anybody would have known here. Everybody liked the mushroom because it's it's a real fungi. Okay. A, a real fun guy. Yeah, fun guy. <laughs> oh, it's a pun. <laughs> okay, it's a pun. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, now I get it. Oh, I'm, sl I'm slow today. Careful. Okay. <laughs> the real fun guy. Oh, I get it. It's a pun. Okay, got it. Oh, got Kathy it. Harder's husband knew the answer. Kathy Harder, <laughs> you have a marvelous husband. He knew it. Great. Is, are you the one with the husband that was the veterinarian? I think that was the vet, right? I okay. think I recall that. Yeah, yeah. Very knowledgeable. Oh, and Laura needs to know the email again. Oh, the email. Okay. It's the same. It's just zasafoto at gmail.com. Okay. Just type it. Just just the same name. Okay. Zasafoto at gmail.com. Okay. The, the, very simple. The, 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 the name that you see uh, from myself. Um, no, I can't type it in at the moment. But but anyway. So very, very simple. Just send me an email and that's it. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we're going to continue on. The, the fungus was not the main point of this story. Okay. But um, so, yeah, the squirrels, they, they spread the fungus, helps the forest grow, uh, but they're also really important for spotted owls. So uh, spotted owls really like to eat flying squirrels. Right. Um, oh, that's a beautiful yeah, one. Really nice picture. Uh, so they're really important mm -hmm. in the ecosystem. But just recently, uh, a biologist was in Wisconsin and he was wandering around the forest with... When a, you say recently, how recent? Uh, yeah. Well, within the last two two or three years, so this but is, they, just, they just released their research That's paper. insane. Well, go. I'm going to listen to this yeah. now. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. he was walking through the forest with a, a black light flashlight, just looking for mushrooms. Some of them glow in the dark, looking for uh, different types of bugs mm -hmm. and sometimes different frogs will glow in the dark if you shine a UV light at them. Right. Um, and so he's walking through the forest and he spotted a flying squirrel was glowing pink in the dark. So it was a complete coincidence, yeah. right? Serendipity, right? Totally That's it. by accident. Right, right, right. Um, so he decided to look into this a little bit. Well, so of course. He got a few museum spe specimens sent to him and they tested them to see if they glowed in the dark. And they found that all of them except for one specimen mm -hmm. glowed in the dark. So really? It's a pretty common thing that nobody knew about before. And now you ask yourself, well, why would you want to identify yourself in the dark like that? Why not have a completely opaque yeah, uh, you know, suit yeah. on? <laughs> and like, what's the function of yeah, what's glowing the function in that, the dark? Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. So basically, why would you want to do that? Because some birds can see UV light. Well, of course they can. Like an owl would yes. now be able to spot Well, that's you. crazy. So here I am. You know, catch yeah. me. So here's a picture again of one glo a, a live one glowing in the dark. Wow. That's incredible. And some of the things that they came up with for reasons why they might do this is uh, this is lichen that grows on a tree and it also glows the same color. So they thought maybe it could be used for camouflaging and with the, the surrounding right, forest. Right, right. Uh, maybe also for communicating with each other, mm -hmm. like maybe if you glow more brightly, you're you're more healthy, so you're more attractive to a mate, something like that. Um, or they thought because some owls glow in the dark, also they could be trying to trick predators into well, thinking that sounds reasonable that to me also because animal. look at their shape, you know, look at the shape uh, that they have. That could actually be very. That sounds very plausible to yeah. me. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know, and what do you guys think? Why would you want to glow in the dark? It doesn't really make sense to me, but... <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And they only discovered this now. Isn't that incredible how little we know about our planet? I'm so shocked. I thought that they would have known this, you know? I mean, yeah. just by mistake, someone that... I mean, for goodness sakes, 
you'd think that they've looked at the whole spectrum and everything they've done all this. They haven't. Yeah. Wow. And so, yeah, I've never seen a flying squirrel because they're out at night and they're really hard to see. But now I really want to go walk through the forest with a black light and just see if I can find <laughs> any flying squirrels because that'd be really cool. Uh, but I think this brings us to our last quiz question. Quiz question. question. Let's put it on. Okay, hang on. That's quiz question. Okay, so that is the last quiz question. I'm going to put the number back in if I can find it. I sorted everything so nicely. Now I can't find it. There we go. There we go. Okay, and there is us. Okay, there, there's the last quiz yeah. question. So this area right here on the flying squirrel's gliding wing area, uh, that flap of skin has a special name. And the quiz question is, what is the special name for that flap of skin on the flying squirrel? Wow. It's not wings, is it? It's not wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. And it's also not flap either. <laughs> oh, not flap. Okay, it's not wings or flap. Not skin okay. Flap. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is another tough one. <laughs> okay. So here's your big chance to dial in again and win the third picture. Um, so so again, what is that flappy? Is that that's that, that is that the whole thing, right? You're talking about yeah. The, uh, what are uh, the skin uh, flaps called skin on the flap. flying? It's squirrel. incredible. It's incredible. Absolutely fascinating. What are they mm -hmm. called? Okay, so do look it up. Do look it up, please. Look it up. I'm just going to see what the comments are. We have lots of flying squirrels. Really tree climbing, isn't that interesting? I've never seen one. I've never seen one. I'd love to photograph one in slow motion. Actually, wow. Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. D. Linehart, yeah, that's a that's a cool. It's a cool question, isn't it? It, it is. It's. A, I think it's a great question. It is. So. Yeah. So they they use those flaps to help them glide, and then they can use their big fluffy tail as a rudder in the sky. Yeah, Betsy, by the way, is asking. Uh, I wonder if males glow more than females. Oh, yeah. that's an interesting one. So that would be have to do with mate attraction, right? I wonder. Yeah, they did say, the one thing I did see was the the mm. amount that they glow doesn't mm. matter by time of year. Oh, right. Okay. So they weren't sure if it was for mating, but it could be. They like right. It's really hard for them to know. They got to do a bunch of different tests and stuff. Gosh, I find this so fascinating. <laughs> Incredible. Pretty cool to be a researcher and just see it, what animals glow in the dark. <laughs> well, that's, what I, want. that's what, what I was just thinking. That's going to be what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the forest at night and you'll be so surprised what you see, right? Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Wow. Okay, so nobody is daring to call in. Osprey Mama says, oh, there we go. Someone is calling in. Let's see who this is. Hello? Hi there. Hi, who is this, please? Uh, my name is Matt. Matt, how are you and where are you calling from? I am calling from Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Gosh, it's late and dark there. It's past nine already. Yep. Yeah, a little after nine. <laughs> and how's the, how's the weather in Washington now? Because, I mean, you get such a, such a crazy winter, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've had a little bit of snowfall. I mean, nothing too serious. <laughs> nothing uh, too so serious. Actually, yeah, it actually snowed a little bit today, but it was just a... Okay, well, have you got any flying squirrels in your area? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but that doesn't mean there aren't any there. I have a lot of regular squirrels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. That's interesting. Well, anyway, now comes the question, this flying squirrel. So what is that flying part called? You know. Uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing this, but is it called uh, Patagium? Yeah, it's a patagium or patagium. I'm not sure how it's said either. <laughs> well, so it's almost like trapezium. That's the only thing I would. Yeah, trapezium. Have. Wow, that's that's a that's a great answer. Did you look that up or did you know it? I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, you've won. Don't worry. I, I, I did look it up. Well, that's good that you did because I mean that's how we learned. I certainly didn't know that. Well, wonderful, Matt. Uh, thanks for calling in from Washington, D.C. Have a wonderful weekend. And don't forget, send me an email, zasafoto at gmail.com, so we don't miss you, okay? I will, and uh, thank you all very much for what you do. I, I greatly appreciate uh, everything. And, and enjoy the beautiful picture, you know, that beautiful pair of Stellars, okay? I will, absolutely. I'm uh, glad you had a great time in uh, Japan. Thank you. Take care. Fine. Bye. Wow, so now you have to show people how to spell that. Let me, oh, yeah, just, I gotta show you how to. 
Oh, now we can't take any more, so I'm just going to put this on silent, unfortunately. So, oh, yeah, you, you yeah. go back to, you know, yeah, or there, 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 that's how you spell it. Hang on, I'm just going to get, uh, get us out way. of the way. <laughs> uh, uh, this is how we get out of the way. There, we there go. you go, and just I'm going to just um, put the phone number back here. Okay, so no more calling in, please. So that's pit Patagium, Patagium. Do you know where that, where the origin of the word there is, where that can come from? Because that's a. No, I don't. I could I don't, Google it. Yeah, Google right it, now. of course. But it's, it's well, that's what we do, right? But that's that's fascinating, Patagium. Uh, is that it for today, or have you got something uh, else? Or just, I'm oh, just, I'm, I'm just curious. I did have a poem I was going to read, but I forgot. I don't know. Do you guys want to hear a poem about herring? Yeah, let's hear a poem. <laughs> let's finally hear a poem about herrings. I, I didn't even know that existed. So let's hear it. I must, I'm sure it's a beautiful one. <laughs> let's hear it. Let's hear it. So that's the Patagium. So you learned three new words today. It's quite incredible. It's quite incredible. So let me just check now. Um, see. Oh, and thank you, Osprey Mama, for the donation. Yeah, thank you, Osprey Mama, and thank you, everybody else. I also wanted to say this is very important. Those of you who, who um, donate in Patreon anyway, you're going to see a lot of these beautiful pictures uh, from Hokkaido, many pictures that that uh, that are unique, absolutely unique, and also those from the beginning of January who've who've donated. We're going to send you pictures, okay? We promise that we're going to send you pictures uh, as a thank you for for the kind donations, okay? That's mm -hmm. Rebecca's going to be behind that. She's taking care of that. So, it's, yeah, and uh, I, I haven't been on the videos as much, but if you've been on Patreon, you've seen all my updates on there. So there's some blogs and stuff there for you guys to check out. So that's 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 fine. Yeah, just follow at gmail.com. He's just got a show that's uh, nature uh, uh, scope is just showing my email. That's very good. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So uh, well, well, uh, well. Thanks. Yeah. Let's let's um, finally. Um, yeah. I'll put this picture away now, and put uh, put this in the put this right back so you can enjoy this beautiful pear. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Poem about herring. So you might have heard this poem before. It's from the late 1800s, and it's by Eugene Field. If you've ever watched Dennis the Menace, this poem Of course we have, movie. for goodness <laughs> sakes. Who doesn't know Dennis the Menace? I uh, loved it. <laughs> so it's called Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. And we'll do this instead of my book review this week, because I'm yeah, a little good. bit behind on my books. Okay, go ahead. All right. Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod one night sailed off in a wooden shoe, sailed on a river of crystal light into a sea of dew. Where are you going and what do you wish? The old moon asked the three. You have come to fish for the herring fish that live in this beautiful sea. Nets of silver and gold have we, said Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. The old moon laughed and sang a song as they rocked in the wooden shoe, and the wind that sped them all night long ruffled the waves of dew. The little stars were the herring fish that lived in the beautiful sea. Now cast your nets wherever you wish, Never afraid are we, so cried the stars to the fishermen three, winkin', blinkin', ah. and nod. All night long their nets they threw to the stars in the twinkling foam. Then down from the skies came the wooden shoe, bringing the fishermen home. T'was all so pretty a sail, it seemed, as if it could not be, and some folk thought t'was a dream they'd dreamed of sailing that beautiful sea. But I shall name you the fishermen three, Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. Winkin and Blinkin are two little eyes, and Nod is a little head. And the wooden shoe that sailed the skies is a wee one's trundled bed. So shut your eyes while Mother sings of wonderful sights that be, and you shall see the beautiful things as you rock in the misty sea. Where the old shoe rocked the fishermen three, Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. Oh, that's so beautiful. It is a really nice poem. That's by yeah. Eugene Field from 1850 to 1895. 1850, really? Goodness me. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much. And I just saw Tree Climbing. Thank you very much for the donation. And Lady Hawk, too. My goodness, you're very generous. All of you are very generous. And Lady Hawk, especially. I mean, you've been absolutely incredible. Uh, helping so much out really i so appreciate that and i'm probably going to ask you again <laughs> to, to do i know i know it's terrible but you do such incredible uh, wor uh, work uh, i i could never reach that with uh, you know doing that on my own so i'm very grateful for all the you know all the help i'm getting from you absolutely magnificent everybody is enjoying this okay because because of your incredible work so thank you again 
uh, subscribe to Lady Hawk's channel. Absolutely marvelous. And and thanks to everyone, by the way, for, for being in, also to Rebecca, uh, preparing this show so nicely, really beautifully done. I think what's so nice to have Rebecca here, she brings in a completely different perspective. Think, and, and that's what's important. You know, we're here to learn and, and uh, it's just great. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And I yeah. hope you guys enjoy learning. And yeah, Hal, I'm glad you guys called in too. That's awesome. Hal says, sweet. He liked it too. I see, uh, looking at the comments here, they all loved it also on Facebook. Very nice. Thank you both, says Danny. Thanks, Susan. I love that. Carrie, um, oh, hang on. What? what uh, ah, read that to my child in a special book on nursery uh, poems. That's what Carrie says. That's great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so thank you so much. So I'm going to now wish you a wonderful weekend. So we're going to have a show next weekend. Uh, so yeah, next Friday. And then I think, what is that? I can't even follow it nights and very soon i'm going to australia again and um i'll probably do live broadcasting from there i can't wait to 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 film the wedgetail eagle the wedgetail eagle is so amazing it's got such a wide wingspan i could never get it properly with my camera but with this video camera now i'm very confident i'm very confident to get it the wedgetail eagle and i want to show you that also live so really exciting stuff coming up in australia where i'm doing some astronomy too by the way so <laughs> okay well so thank you so much and thanks also for the kind comment again for that answer lady hawk very kind of you so let me just um uh do this very so first of all i'll say goodbye to the all the facebook um uh, friends i just have to switch everything off so thank you so much for for all the uh uh, also, Jenny, of course, great job, Jenny, uh, for, for helping. Kit also, hi, Kit, on Facebook, and have a wonderful weekend. Very nice to see all of you on, on, on Facebook. Goodbye. And then, of course, to YouTube. YouTube, we have to do a little bit differently. So thanks for, uh, thanks for all the donations also, and um, wishing you a wonderful weekend, huh? So next week. yeah, take take care. We'll come up with some interesting stories again. By the way, if you have anything interesting ever to tell us, some interesting story, do write to me, zasafola at gmail.com. I'd love to share that with the world. Thank you so much.